Dr. Umendra Nath Parma, the chairman of the Board of Open University, Dr. Kaviraj Sukron, BFHEA, the Director General of the Open University, Dr. Ushad Subhada, Director Academic Affairs Division, dear graduates, colleagues, lecturers, tutors, non-academic staff, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a matter of immense pride and honor to be invited to grace the 10th, obviously I was told not 10th, it's up to 14th convocation, and have the privilege to participate in the graduation ceremony of the Open University of Mauritius. I wish to express my most profound thanks to Dr. Kaviraj Sukum, the Director General for his cordial invitation. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the convocation today is another memorable occasion which stands for an important milestone in the 10 years existence of the Open University of Mauritius. A stronghold for education, knowledge, and what Winston Churchill once said, a place of illumination. I take this opportunity to congratulate Dr. Kaviraj Sukong, the Director General, and the staff of the Open University on the 10th anniversary of the meaningful existence of the university. May the Open University of Mauritius fulfill its mission with grace and achieve greater heights of success in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me in the first instance to extend my warmest congratulations to all the students who have successfully completed their studies at graduate and postgraduate levels in various disciplines. They deserve my well-deserved praise on their admirable achievements. I wish them the very best in their professional and personal lives. I also take this appropriate moment to express my high regard for the chairman and the board members of the Open University for taking the university to the stature of a premier academic institution, both nationally and internationally. Thank you, sir. In the same vein, I wish to commend Dr. Kaviraj Sharma Sukong the Director General of the, for his committed initiatives to set effective structures and to provide meaningful resources available to make quality education a possible reality at the university. Last but not the least, I wish to convey my warmest appreciation to the lecturers, tutors, and non-teaching staff for their relentless efforts in enhancing quality education and encouraging critical thinking for proficient scholarship. Thank you all very much. Dear graduates, it's my turn now to give you my message. On this significant day of your life, my topic that I have chosen to pass a message to you is there's a close association with my good students, whom I always call good students. They are not mere students. They are my good students because they always conform to the norms of teaching and learning. A close association with my good students as professor of law. After careful reflection, I chose the topic quality education and judicial independence, which I found to be befitting since every professional is called upon to make bold and reasoned decisions in time of ethical problems and ethical dilemmas, which the Director General has mentioned already. Quality education, ladies and gentlemen, is such a, in such complex situation, remains the foremost ben benchmarking standard to demonstrate the highest level of knowledge, intellect, and wisdom to create self-confidence so as to lead a life of greater fulfillment. And I'm pleased to note that the very mission statement of the Open University is indeed quality education. Judicial independence then, in my opinion, is an entrenched virtue 
that can only emanate from quality education, giving the protagonist an assertive power to make fair and reasonable decisions without being constrained by fear, bias, or any prejudices. Quality education, dear graduates, is therefore an imperative sine qua non for judicial independence, which makes an individual bold enough to challenge the traditional way of thinking, encourage him to pursue strict discipline, and make him accountable for his decision. Quality education and judicial independence complement and supplement each other as powerful tenets to make a decision legally valid, fair in its procedures, and reasonable in dispensing social justice. At this point, dear graduates, allow me to cite to you a case of dismissal that appeared before me when I was the president of the Commission for Conciliation and Mediation. The facts were as follows. On 20th December 2011, a worker was found stealing fertilizers and he accepted his guilt. The employer dismissed him summarily. It was indeed an open and shut case with the least option for mitigation. The rigid test before the commission was to find a fair solution for the reinstatement of the worker and reconcile the parties in the dispute for better working relationship. In the present context, one may ask, how can quality education and judicial independence assist in finding possibilities of resolution and, reconcil and reconciliating the parties? Quality education in labor and industrial relations law will enhance proficiency and confidence in understanding and in the application of suitable employment laws. Whereas judicial independence will keep a moral balance necessary to counteract against any negative emotions and lead a person towards a valid, fair, and reasonable decision without any bias or prejudices. Dear graduates, in extolling the virtues of quality education and judicial independence, the most undisputed determining factor that can lead to a right decision is to be endowed with a strong moral character that upholds the principles of positive attitude, ethical behavior, and selfless duties. While teaching my good students, I've always put greater emphasis on building of a resilient character that relies immensely on moral probity for maintaining legitimacy and fairness in their decision making. Great people like Mahatma Gandhi and Nelson Mandela were guided more by the moral choice to work on their character rather than focusing on personal image. We are in this context minded to reflect on the powerful words of Mahatma Gandhi who said, I quote, all your scholarship, all your study of Shakespeare and Wordsworth would be vain if at the same time you do not build your character and attain mastery over your thoughts and your action, I unquote. And Nelson Mandela reiterated the same level of thinking. He said, I quote, nothing is more important than building your inner architecture strengthening your character, and elevating your thinking, I unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, when using quality education and judicial independence as a means to make a right decision, we need to think critically of a variety of considerations pertinent to the moral assessment based on strong moral character which enjoins a person to a proper behavior and a positive attitude towards the matter at issue. My message to you, dear graduates, will be, based on the spectrum of views and advice that may appear before you, you need to align yourself with the, what quality education has been given to you at the Open University. Next, try fully to fully understand any material fact presented before you, 
and articulate yourself through the assertive power of judicial independence to make an enlightened and considered response to bring inner peace and harmony at the workplace. At this point, I may refer to the wise words of Mark Twain, who has said, I quote, each man must himself alone decide what is right and what is wrong. And it is the charismatic excellence of the strong man that can bring momentous issues to the fore and make decisions about them. Therefore, dear graduates, whenever you are confronted with an ethical dilemma or you are challenged to make a moral choice, use your quality education as your springboard and rely on your personal values and shrine in objectivity, fair-mindedness, and equal vision to sustain your judicial independence in making bold decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude my message with the insightful words of Stephen Covey, who, was, who has beautifully encapsulated the idea of quality education and judicial independence. He has written, I quote, the search for the third alternative is our greatest opportunity to change our mindset and stop the unproductive wrangling that takes us nowhere, to open our minds and listen to each other and rejoice the new lives we can create for ourselves. With these words, ladies and gentlemen and dear graduates, may I bless all of you this morning that they may the Lord show you the path of enlightenment in your journey of greater achievement and fulfillment of your wishes so that you become professionals and become good people for the society and give whatever the best instrument you can be of love and peace you can carry all over. Thank you all very much for listening to me.